Hey everybody, so it's a beautiful evening here and we're actually, I would call it, we're in spring. There it is. I actually wore shorts for the first time. I, I declare it short season now. So absolutely beautiful night. There's nothing in the sky except galaxies and this telescope does not do galaxies well. <laughs> so it does if I put a lot of time into it, but I'm working on making the transition over into the HD8 and it does do galaxies, but I, I gotta get from where I'm at now, get it set up and, and get it going and waiting on a couple things to arrive that I've ordered a, uh, an adapter for my uh, uh, Astro Oasis Oasis focuser that'll adapt to the edge. Got a couple clamps because I need a mounting solution for my mini computer and also for my power hub. And then uh, right now I'm working on uh, setting up the image train and that's what I wanted to go over with you tonight. I'm gonna work on getting my uh, back focus set up and I thought I'd share that with you on uh, how I'm figuring out the right back focus for the Edge HD8 by Celestron. So let's go check that out. So I wanted to, really I want to clean up this mess and make some progress on getting set up. I've got some parts ordered, so I'm waiting on a adapter from Astro Oasis for my focuser to adapt onto the edge focus knob. And I have a couple of, of fix and rail clamps coming to connect my mini PC and my power hub uh, to the top rail on the OTA there and then just the cabling so really I get the MS train done here and all of this and I'll go through this here in just a moment and then get my uh, PC and power hub and cabling done and I'm going to be able to uh, take this thing out for the first night and uh, check the collimation I'll go through I'll probably do a little video on collimating and, uh, and then see if I can get a first light on that. I'll have to do set up of my profile and stuff like that and Nina. But anyway, I thought I'll kind of go through what I have laid out here and how I'm gonna put this together. So first I'm gonna put a diagram up screen here and I'll talk about what I'm doing here. So I've got the Celestron T adapter and that T adapter is going to be 50 millimeters. And then I have a, a, a few different adapters for the Celestron OAG. And uh, what I determined is that the, uh, the one that I measured out at 3.3 millimeters is the one that's going to work out for me uh, in use. And I believe that one is actually called a, uh, a T adapter. And uh, and then of course there's the, uh, well that's at, it, like again, that's at 3.3 millimeters. And then the OAG itself. So the OAG is, uh, when I looked up the measurements online, I kept coming across 29 millimeters. When I measured it myself, I came up with 30. But um, in either case, one millimeter difference, I don't think is gonna be a problem. Um, I have 29 on the sheet here because that's really what's documented and uh, you know, with the, uh, the Celestron OAG. But uh, I just wanted to call that out because um, in my own measurements, I, I came up with 30 on that. And then on the back side, there's the, uh, the OAG's camera adapter, uh, which I am gonna use the 12.5 millimeter adapter for that. And then the, uh, the Astro Oasis Oasis electronic filter wheel is 21 millimeters. And then the back focus, or the, the back set of the sensor on the Player One Artis, Artemis M Pro is 17.5 millimeters. And that's cool because that's the same back set as the ASI 533 MC Pro that I use. So it'll be easy for me to simply swap out cameras without having to make any other changes. 
Now, obviously this is for the native back focus setup that I have here, which has a required back focus of 133.35 millimeters. So I'm coming in at 133.3. If the OAG is actually 30, then I'm 134.3. In either case, I think that's going to be just fine. So let's take a look at what I have on the table here. So I've got the Celestron T adapter. Now I don't need this T adapter portion of this, so that's going to go away. And then I already measured this, so the dimension of uh, from this shoulder right here to the uh, mounting flat is 50 millimeters. So that's going to be the first item in the chain. Now I have a uh, M48 to M42 thread adapter here that I need and that is so that I can fit this into the OAG which is so and I'm I always like to put the slots on these away from the female side so that if it gets jammed in there I will uh, be able to get it out with a spanner or something like that so anyway I'll put that on there and then that's going to then thread into the OAG. I think I'll take this off. And so I want to make sure that I've got this going the right way. And it is the, let me double check the, uh, the prism. Because we want the prism flat side, which it is here, to be facing the telescope. And then, so the female side of this adapter is going to be interfacing with the, the T adapter tube. So I'll screw that on. So at this point right here is where if I make a change and go with the, the 0.7 reducer, so from this point back, so these two items here um, are going to get swapped out for the reducer. I'll be using this SCT adapter instead. And when I get my reducer, which is one of the items that's coming, um, I'll do another video for back focus using the reducer. But for right now, we'll just we'll just keep it specific to uh, the native the native back focus. So anyway, I've got these two items connected and then I can go ahead and attach that to the OAG. And I do like this because this allows independent rotation of the OAG and, and the rest of the camera assembly. So that's nice as a rotator. I, uh, I do have the Stella Lyra rotator and I'm not sure how I'm going to make that work with this image train or if I can or not uh, because I think it's going to affect the back focus so anyway I'm just going to go with this right now because it's more simple and I do have the ability to rotate and using the uh, framing assistant and Nina it'll it'll let me know what I need to do all right and then I've got the OAG here and then on the other side of this we've got the camera adapter. So let's go ahead and pull this off. So now this is going to connect to the electronic filter wheel. So this is the Astroasis electronic filter wheel. Alright, and it tells us nicely here, this is the camera side, so we're on the telescope side. And I'm going to install this reducer into the electronic filter wheel. And one thing I'd like to show you that's really cool, they provide a little tool for this that has a couple of little nubs on it that fit into these 
on these adapters so you can then screw them in or unscrew them if you need to. But that way I can screw that down tight. Now while I'm here, just because it'll be easier, I'm going to do the other side, which is going to the camera. And that'll be the same thing. I have another M48 to M42 adapter here. And again, I'm going to set this up with the notches facing away from the female side so that if need be, and it gets stuck inside the camera, then I can get this out. So I'll put the adapter on there. So one thing that I want to do is to, I'm basically, I wouldn't be able to show you this on camera, but I'm looking to make sure that the prism isn't obstructing the camera sensor, and it looks pretty good right now. So I think we're okay there. I don't think this cap will fit, but I think we can go ahead and one thing that I, that I do need to do is I need to determine the distance from the center of the prism back to the sensor and then make sure that I have the, the camera sensor equidistant from the center of the prism up to the guide camera, but I'll, I'll do that later. I'm gonna go ahead and install this on the telescope for now and then I will have some of this clutter picked up, which will make me happy. 
So let me grab the telescope. I'll kind of stand up for this part. assembly. also nice because this can rotate from this point as well so I don't, I'm not going to be hurting for any points of rotation by any means I think that's somewhat lined up sticks down a little bit further I, I may end up um, we'll see so this is 90 right now so I think this will act or this is yeah 90 degrees off right now to get this at zero I think I would be at here anyway so I'm going to keep it there for now so I can set this down. And then, let's see. I'd like to get a cap on that. I don't know that I have one that fits. So I'll have to get a cap over the OAG here and uh, just make sure I've got it sealed for dust. So I'll put this back, cleaned up the, the area a bit. I'm, I'm one step closer. Uh, my next phase of the operation is I should have the clamps to go on that top ADM rail tomorrow or the day after. and then I can go ahead and take the uh, mini PC off the old uh, telescope and, uh, and the power pack or the power hub, see what cabling is gonna work and what cabling I need. I do have quite a bit of cables laying around in my travel kit. So and I, I think I do have some longer ones because I think the, the, the runs are gonna be a little bit longer on this setup than they were on the other telescope. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm pretty close. I'm hoping that I'll be collimating and doing a first light later this week. So I have a couple more videos to do this week and I'll be putting those out you know, whenever uh, I get to them. But anyway, I hope this helped out and you know, especially like that diagram. And again, when I get my reducer, I'll do another video on setup of the reducer and I'll put another diagram together and share that with you. So anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, give a like and uh, your subscribe would be amazing. So uh, thank you very much and appreciate you stopping by. My name is Doug and this is Astro AF.